The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome everyone, Byron White here from Idea Launch. I'm happy to be joined today with Mike Roberts from SpyFu that's going to join me today for a fantastic webinar. Our annual, I'm actually, I think we're up to our 14th um, uh, monthly content marketing webinar at Idea Launch. And I'm really happy to showcase a few new secrets and innovation that we're seeing in the content marketing world. And Mike is here with some super, super secret new releases and some information about some upcoming stuff that's truly changed the world uh, sort of stuff regarding SEO and what SpyFu can do with competitive intelligence to help you better your business. So without further ado, I'm going to chime right in. I'm going to talk with you about a few upgrades uh, on the general content, the all-important content planning process. Uh, I'm going to tell you a few secrets about uh, writers and finding them and also a new release that we have at Idea Launch on a product uh, that we're very excited about called Writer Access and how people are using it. Um, I'm going to talk about our all-important methodology for tracking ROI measurement, and then everyone's going to get a link to, to my 101 Content Marketing Tips book that you can download for free, saving you the $9.99 that I charge at Amazon and other places online. So without further ado, let's dive right in, and I'm um, going to take about 15 minutes to really plow through some slides here to show you uh, some, some innovations that we see with really this initial sort of planning process, how critical it is for, in the end, tracking ROI. Um, just literally in the last two or three months, we've really changed a lot about what we do and how we do in this stage, so I'm going to kind of input you on some new developments. So the key for us is, is planning. We've actually no longer sell content assets by themselves. They really are packaged now with content planning services for a variety of reasons. We found that just creating content by itself in a vacuum, even if we did a little bit of optimization in SEO for those individual articles, really wasn't delivering the ROI where our clients were demanding. Instead, we really needed to research what was going on. And Mike's going to talk about that a little bit today in terms of what's happening with, with, in the content audit. Uh, phase is critical, looking at the competition and how much content they have on their website, documenting it all, put together customer profiles and style guides, um, and really doing a complete and thorough analysis of what's happening in the marketplace. I would contend before you even write your first article, if you're launching a content marketing campaign, you've really got to figure out what's going on in the marketplace. And you need to, you'll see in a second, you need to answer three big questions. How much content do I need? How good does it need to be? And how frequently do, do I need to publish it to get the ROI to, I demand? So next, we have some tools, and Mike does it well at SpyFu, on quickly sort of evaluating the overall market share that you have, particularly in the search engines. This is a screen grab where green is good and blue is bad. Um, comparing a, a client, our wedding day that we have, and three competitors. Um, and you'll see that they have an uphill battle as, you, as they compare themselves with these three competitors. Um, so we already begin to see very, very quickly that you know, if we look at how many top 100 listing positions that our client has versus the competition, they've got an uphill battle. So we know that we've got a lot of work to do and probably a lot of content that needs to be created. Uh, and a lot of SEO and internal link building strategy that needs to be created if the client's goal is to, is to top these, these competitors. <clears throat> but I think you need to look beyond just organic and SEO when you evaluate your site versus the competition. Remember, content marketing is a broad subject area, which gets into certainly content creation and content optimization, but also content testing, you know, A-B testing, multivariant testing, web testing. Um, and, and, and so you need to be thinking outside of the box here. And you need to be thinking about your communication with your customers and your ability to listen to their wants and needs. So this is a nice checklist that you can really 
do a quick and easy scoring of your site versus a competitor. And this is really helpful with clients. I can bang something this out using some tools and technologies on a client's website in like 15 or 20 minutes as we're evaluating a prospect customer. And you need to be able to do the same yourself to see what you're up against. Um, next, we'll look at um, researching. I think I actually skipped one. So, next we'll look at um, researching the keyword silos. So, you know, as it turns out, you're going to see in a second that there's a distinction between keyword silos and and topics that you may want to write about. Um, and what we're trying to do is to quickly identify silos and groups of keywords within those silos that we can look at how a client is currently performing. So, what we do quickly is first we, we develop by hand, and Mike's going to show you some shorter, faster ways to do this, but we'll go in and, and we'll look at, at, at a silo that we'll call accessories or planning. And we'll look at, okay, let's go grab you know 100 or 500 or however many keywords we decide are necessary for that silo. We'll look at the, uh, the, the search volume, the maximum search volume, or the average search volume per keyword phrase that we've selected. We'll look at the overall pay-per-click price um, the, the, and again, that's the the, the pay-per-click cost of the other relative keywords, the maximum cost or the uh, the average cost. So we'll look at some data to kind of see how much potential revenue there is. And Mike's got some super great stuff that he's going to show you on determining that that average cost value or opportunity cost per keyword. But we're also looking at the current market share for that particular keyword phrase. We're also looking at how the, the listing positions in that keyword phrase. In accessories, for example. We love this distinction within, within a group of keywords. We like to say, OK, maybe we have 100 keywords in this, in this silo. And what percentage of those are in positions 1 through 10? What percentage are in 11 through 50? What positions are, are 51 through 100? And what positions are greater than 100? This position chart on the right really gives us a fast and clear indication for delivering ROI and, and results quickly. If we, if we can grab those keywords that are in, say, positions 11 through 50 and build a lot of content using those keyword phrases, we can probably move those into the top 10 and capture market share very quickly. So anyway, research in keyword silo development becomes critical. Here's another blowout. I just wanted to show you how we do this. This is another keyword silo. And what we're showing here, again, is, is sort of the breakdown of, of the percentage of keywords in that keyword silo that are in these variable positions. Um, and golden keywords we assign to every key keyword silo that we create for clients. And I know I'm going really fast, and you can hear a recording of this presentation. But what we try to do is to scatter a client's golden keyword list, the keywords that they care more, more, most about. We try to scatter those in the keyword silos. And that helps us with scoring. We can add weighted priorities. It also helps really to identify how hard it's going to be to get success and how much supportive content we really need uh, within a keyword silo to support those cold and golden keywords. And this is really interesting, this chart, besides the colors that are kind of radical. Um, what we're doing over here is we're, we're trying to look, we're trying to make you understand that you need to come at content with several different vantage points. Um, number one is categories. And categories are driven typically by writers. Like we know we need to write about wedding traditions on a wedding site or wedding etiquette. And we know there are going to be subcategories that the writer really wants to write about. But then what we're able to do is we're able to pepper in our keyword silos that very often will double up in different categories. So we're, we're going to be able to score content for SEO strength by keyword silo in a number of different categories. So we're sort of intermixing keyword silos with the categories, but the categories are already, already, always remaining the, four, the, the, the focal point for, for writers and what their roles and responsibilities are. 